Yes. What ways do you think that LLMs like transformers are revolutionizing the natural language understanding? Okay, uh, sir, the transformer is basically using the advanced self attention mechanism, uh, which is something new from the traditional model. Uh, these mechanisms allow them to capture uh, some kind of intricate context, which is resulting in more coherent and uh, contextually relevant responses. Additionally, I can uh, add here, transformers are also enable uh, to perform parallel processing and uh, they, they are enhancing the uh, training speed as well as the model ability to understand the complex language patterns as well. Because you talk about uh... Uh, on the yes, hyperparameters sir. and the scaling law. So how does scaling law impact the whole training process of LLMs? Uh, sir, basically the scaling law uh, help us, uh, it guide us uh, uh, as well as uh, when we are training the language model. Uh, it uh, guide the training of LLM by understanding uh, optimal model size. And uh, uh, except model size, uh, model size, it also include the data set requirements. So it prevent overfitting, ensuring the efficient training as well as it also increase the uh, model performance by doing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first lecture of this tutorial, uh, which is on large language models. In this lecture, we will be describing the introduction about large language models, its need and uh, its relationship, like uh, why it is needed. Uh, so uh, we have our guest speaker, Ms. Kamrad Nisa with us, and she'll be presenting us the whole concept of large language models. So uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Kamrad Nisa, in this session. Uh, Thank you. Over to you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. It's a pleasure to have all of you here today. Uh, today we will be, we will talk about uh, the amazing and uh, interesting domain of large language models and uh, we will explore how they are revolutionizing the artificial intelligence and uh, natural language processing. When considering the domain of large language models, several concepts come into our mind, including, but these are not limited like generative AI, chatbots, prompt engineering, building LLMs, and uh, human AI collaboration, etc. So each of these terms um, evoke curiosity regarding their precise functionalities. In the forthcoming lecture series, we shall thoroughly explore each of these aspects by constructing a comprehensive knowledge and practical implementation. We will be building our knowledge together by exploring uh, every possible section of LLM, like uh, if you want to use them, how you can do that, like if you want to customize them, what option do we have? And if you go for building LLM from scratch, then what are the steps? Uh, some hardware consideration, their cost and size requirements, and ethical consideration, as well as uh, some security and privacy concern. Now, uh, before we dive into the exciting world of LLMs, let's discuss uh, what you should be familiar with. Uh, so we have prerequisites. Uh, you need to uh, actually you don't need to be a genius to get this concept. Uh, just make sure you are comfortable with Python programming. Uh, you need to know about the basic uh, concepts of natural language processing, machine learning, and uh, deep learning fundamentals. Uh, plus, uh, you need to have uh, you need to be familiar with uh, data handling. Uh, let's outline our objectives. Uh, we will begin by understanding the LLMs. Uh, we will begin by understanding why LLMs are so important. Then we will uncover the uh, architecture that power these incredible models. Following that, uh, we will explore how uh, the diverse variation of LLMs model, uh, which are available nowadays. And then we will address the challenges that uh, complement their remarkable capabilities. Uh, let's move to our agenda. Uh, this is the uh, agenda that we will be addressing during today's session. Uh, so uh, fast forwarding toward the introduction. Uh, so uh, what are LLMs? Now we are discussing the core of our topics. What exactly are these language models? As we know, these models are exceptionally intelligent machines which are trained on a huge, a massive number of data sets. Uh, 
the purpose of these LLMs to uh, is to understand the human languages and interact uh, with a human by understanding their language. They are actually not ordinary model. We all know that, and uh, they are deep learning champions, having enough capabilities with billions of parameters. Here is a question: How is the are uh, how we can say these regular models are these large language models are different from regular model? Uh, so a uh, a language model which is we call traditional model is more generic. Then a large language model, just like uh, if here I would like to take a simple example, uh, like all squares are rectangle, but not all rectangles are square. So all LLMs are language models, but we cannot say all LLMs yeah, uh, are all language models are LLM. In this diagram, these instances uh, we can see here uh, represent some uh, which are representing represented by some notable. Uh, Entities such as Big Science, Elliter AI, Google Science, uh, Google Research, and Meta AI, with their uh, respective LLMs uh, classification and uh, associated parameters. But uh, now let's see why LLMs matter. What make the need for LLMs so demanding? So uh, the answer lies in their versatility. Because we know that these models are known as task agnostic. Why we call this? Because these models are enough capable of handling an area of tasks without demanding extensive adjustment. If we take an example of ChatGPT, uh, whenever you ask a question from ChatGPT, it always amazes uh, with its answer. So at the runtime, you have no need to fine tune the model. Just you need to do uh, to prompt a model. So with a single prompt, it will provide you an instant solution to any problem you are facing. Uh, prompt engineering uh, is a technique. I would like to tell you that you can use this technique to create pro prompt to get the desired response from the language model. Like any model, uh, any of the chat GPT or stable diffusion mid journey or any other AI tool can be included. Uh, so before moving to the next slide, I would like to emphasize at the point of go, uh, gaining a good experience and prompt engineering because uh, this approach uniquely involves plain English as a programming language. This is the only way to communicate with these models effectively. Uh, for those who are interested, I suggest to explore the free prompt engineering course, which is available on the official website of deeplearning.ai. So uh, let's examine the evolution of these LLMs. As we all know that uh, the large language models did not develop overnight, let's get back to the 1960s when the first NLP program ELISA was introduced. Fast forwarding to the present and now we are surrounded by the galaxy of LLM at our disposal. But before moving forward, we need to take a look at the most important phase, which is uh, 2017 phase uh, when there was a breakthrough in the research of NLP. Through the research paper, attention is all you need. And this paper, it revolutionized the entire NLP landscape. The researcher introduced a new architecture, which was known as Transformer, uh, to overcome the challenges with uh, LSTM. As, uh, and now, even today, the development of the LLM uh, remain influenced by Transformer. Over the next five years, there was a significant research focused on Building LLM, uh, building a better LLM as compared to the transformer. So uh, there are different uh, GPT variants are uh, available now, which are GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-3.5, and GPT-4, uh, with an increase in size as well as in their parameter and the training data set. In 2022, there was another breakthrough in, L uh, in NLP. Uh, which was chat GPT. So chat GPT is basically working on uh, the technique of dialogue optimization, uh, which is basically capable of answering anything you uh, you are asking. In a couple of months, Google uh, also introduced Bard as a competitor to chat GPT, and uh, in last one year, there have been hundreds of language model uh, developed. Uh, so we can take an example of an open source uh, model, which is Falcon 40 billion. Uh, now, uh, breaking down the types of LLM, 
some of them are uh, functioning as uh, sentence completion and uh, some of them are working uh, working based on instruction fine tuning uh, if we uh, if we see for instance uh, the sentence completion are base model uh, because we uh, we call sentence completion uh, base model as well where you provide them with a sentence and they ad adeptly complete it so the base llm has been trained to predict the next word based on the training data often training on a large amount of data from internet and other resources like uh, if you ask something and uh, they uh, and we are expecting that the what will be the most likely word uh, to follow next so let's take an example uh, by typing uh, if we type uh, how are you uh, from these base model, then uh, you might be receiving the response is and how are you doing? But if you prompt with what is the capital of France, then based on what article uh, on the internet might have, it's quite possible that the base LLM will complete this uh, question with what is France large city or it uh, can uh, complete this uh, with what is France uh, population and so on. Because the article on this uh, on the internet could uh, quite plausibly be a list uh, of quiz question about the country of France. So uh, some of uh, the language model falling under this category are transformer, ExcelNet uh, and variant different variants of GPT, etc. Uh, here I would like to mention that the problem with these LLMs are uh, they are very good at sentence completion rather than comprehensive answer. Uh, but sometimes we need answer rather than completion. So these models are less adapted proficiently generating uh, responses. Now, in contrast, instruction tuned or dialogue optimized LLM uh, are in uh, we are going to discuss. And uh, these models go beyond uh, sentence completion and provide some kind of comprehensive response where uh, a lot of momentum of LLM research and practice has been going on. If we see an instruction tuned LLM, which is basically trained to follow the instruction. So uh, if you were, uh, if you want to ask any question, what is the capital of uh, France? So these model much more likely to output something like the capital of France is Paris. So the way that instruction tuned LLMs are typically trained, uh, these are totally based on instructions. So it is a good attempt. Uh, to follow uh, these instructions when you are interacting with interacting with these models and then often further uh, if you want to refine it using different techniques called uh, rlhf which is basically uh, reinforcement learning from uh, human feedback uh, so in order to make the system better which is basically used uh, in model to make the system better and uh, to make them helpful and uh, to follow the instruction because these models uh, are fine-tuned uh, and trained to help to be helpful and honest uh, as well as uh, harmless so for example if they are less likely to output problematic texts such as uh, they are generating toxic output compared to the base model uh, some of them uh, a lot of practical usage scenarios have been shifting toward the, uh, these models uh, which are instruction tuned llms uh, so some best practices uh, you find on internet may be more suited to the base llm uh, for a practical application, uh, I would suggest you to uh, to go for instruction tuned LLM, which are much easier to use. Some common examples of these models uh, which are using uh, this technique are Instruct GPT, Chat GPT Bard, and Falcon, uh, which is an open source model. Let's move further uh, to see the architecture of LLM. Uh, how do LLM perform their magic? It's all depend upon their architecture. So uh, the transformer is a secret architecture behind all of these uh, latest LLM, like uh, any model we consider, any lang large language model we consider, which is uh, can be chat GPT, BART, etc. So these transformer consist of layers like input embedding, self attention, uh, and uh, feed, feed forwarding networks. Uh, what is the role of these layers? All these are uh, used to contribute and uh, the language comp uh, comprehension. We will be discussing the uh, architecture of LLM and uh, upcoming slides in more detail manner. So let's see. Uh, let's take a look at the technical aspects for a moment. Uh, we all know that LLM come with settings uh, which are uh, known as hyperparameters, and uh, these are important to control uh, these settings are basically much more important to control the model's behavior 
and uh, we it also kept uh, enable us to uh, uh, to switch the regulation and rules between them uh, some elements like batch size learning rate and uh, weight initializing which uh, uh, weight initialization which play a vital role in uh, increasing their performance so you can see the figure uh, which is uh, uh, where different models are present and their with their parameters now let's see uh, what are the best practices to use these hyperparameters. So uh, if we, uh, we need to choose a large batch size when you uh, when you are choosing a model for training uh, or during the training of a model which fit the GPU memory. So weights are the most important parameters because uh, model uh, model convergence highly depends upon the weight initialization. Uh, so uh, how we can in initialize these these weights? We need to initialize proper weight like uh, a common example is fix up uh, which help us to achieve faster convergence. So uh, to uh, to avoid overfitting, uh, we can we can use uh, the norm normalization as well as some other techniques are dropout and L1 L2 regularization. Now. Uh, now let's see how we can evaluate the effectiveness of large language model. If we see in case of uh, classification and regression, when uh, we have the true labels and uh, I'm talking about a traditional model working. So uh, there we have true labels and the predict labels. Then we compare both of them to understand how well the model is uh, performing. Uh, but in case of LLM, it is not the same thing. We adopt different uh, techniques to uh, evaluate these models. So uh, there are two different uh, primary methods, uh, which are intrinsic and extrinsic method. Uh, in intrinsic method, we evaluate in, uh, in case of classification and regression. We have the two labels and uh, predicted label. Then we uh, compare both of them to understand well the model is performing. But in the case of LLM, it is not the same thing. We, we adopt uh, two different methods, which are uh, intrinsic and extrinsic evaluation method. Uh, so if we see intrinsic method, these methods are uh, used to examine the language related aspects such as perplexity and uh, bit per character to see how well these language models uh, are predicting the next word. Now let's see the perplexity and bit per character. What uh, are these things? Uh, these are basically two different metrics used to evaluate the performance of language model or uh, large language models. Uh, so now let's see the extrinsic method. In, uh, in contrast to the intrinsic method, uh, it assess how LLMs fare in real world tasks like problem solving or uh, answering queries, uh, answering user queries and uh, solving competitive exam like MIT and JWE. Uh, for uh, your information, I would like to highlight here in the evaluation phase, the JGPT failed the JWE and MIT uh, exam uh, based on the response because the exam questions are somehow uh, require deep uh, comprehension uh, and critical thinking as well and the context awareness which can challenge the uh, language model capability uh, so like chat gpt now uh, training llm uh, we all know that the training llm is uh, not a straightforward task it requires substantial computation power as well some kind of uh, financial investment. So consi considering their size, their magnitude, uh, we, we are dealing with the models which demand uh, a huge data set which uh, and as well as some kind of significant processing capabilities. And uh, uh, so let's see what kind of challenges uh, we may face during the training or during the fine tuning a model. So uh, let's see the example here the chat gpt3 model if we want to train it on a single tesla gpu it would take 288 years to train it is a huge time limit it is a huge duration so uh, from this example we can take we can see this uh, how much it is important to see the to see these aspects like infrastructure cost and size 
now we have uh, now we see the size how size matters uh, while choosing llm or while training a uh, llm so the size of llm matter a lot during the model selection process for uh, training presenting here uh, the llm in this diagram uh, which are varying dimensions uh, denoting their parameters count in uh, millions and billions uh, so uh, let's move further to see the cost uh, scenario uh, it is basically uh, also take an example after 7 billion mo model uh, it would cost roughly to $25,000 to train from scratch if you take an example of open source model the cost of training from scratch and the fine tuning may depend on the uh, several factors such as their amount of data and the hardware resources uh, they are going to use as well as their hyperparameters uh, so uh, here is an example of ChatGPT3. Uh, the whole uh, it was estimated that the whole cost was 4.6 million dollars uh, to train it from scratch. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's understand the scaling law. It is basically a technique uh, which is called scaling law. The it uh, it guides us to determine the ideal model size and uh, the data quality uh, data quality plus data quantity to re uh, it required to effectively train the llm without going overboard uh, but actually this last state it state that the number of tokens here number of token represent the uh, actually the data set we are using to train the model uh, so what it is uh, what this uh, uh, scaling last state it state that the number of tokens used to train uh, should be used. So it is really necessary to ask these questions prior to the experiment. Question number one is how much data do I need to train LLM from scratch and what should be the size of the model? Both of these answer will be uh, both of these questions will be answered by the scaling law. How uh, it help us to maintain a balance between having enough data to capture the complexities of language model language patterns and uh, uh, it uh, help us to prevent the model from becoming overly uh, specific to the training data uh, for the second question it how it answer by considering the scaling law uh, we can avoid the unnecessary large or uh, small model that might not align well with the available data set so uh, let's see the uh, different applications of LLM, uh, including the natural language processing, sentiment analysis, including speech recognition, and even uh, content generation. Uh, their robust enhancing and uh, some kind of digital experiences. We can also use these models for personal uh, uh, for personal use. Is we can create a chatbot for uh, as per our requirements. Uh, we can also use it for commercial use like. Uh, machine translation, uh, natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and uh, uh, like for content creation and uh, any other aspects uh, you are uh, trying to use, as well as uh, commercial use. Also here, uh, let's see the implementation phase. Uh, we have got the tools, uh, these tools by which uh, facilitate us uh, during the whole process. Uh, we can utilize the hugging face transformers and TensorFlow as well as PyTorch platform, as, uh, which act as uh, our friends for implementing and uh, working with language models. Uh, so they simplify the um, uh, techniques for uh, compl uh, and complexities. Uh, so for model selection framework, these are the uh, different platforms and for data preparation and pre-processing, -pre we are going to use uh, this kind of libraries and tools for fine tuning and training. We are uh, accessing and we are using the model from Hugging Face, Transformers, TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, for evaluation and analysis. We will use different metrics that uh, visualizing tools as well as uh, for uh, development and integration we will be utilizing and, uh, for um, memory management and uh, uh, model uh, versionizing we can use uh, different techniques like version control model uh, 
you remember the universe of large language model where uh, ai and human language collide in a remarkable uh, vn these models are basically reshaping how we interact with the machines and uh, exploring a new area uh, of uh, interaction and understanding that's all from my side please uh, you can ask any question yeah many thanks for this very informative lecture ms nisa uh, i have some questions so how do large language models differ from the traditional language models uh, sir uh, the large language models are different in uh, some kind of uh, aspects like their size their complexity and their capacity to uh, comprehend the context these because these uh, large language models are uh, using massive data set these are trained on huge data sets and uh, uh, these are uh, able to generate the coherent and contextually relevant responses whereas traditional model often lack this kind of capabilities uh, they are not uh, uh, able to generate the responses the coherent responses like the large language models okay uh, very well said uh, also can you explain why llms are often described as task agnostic models uh, yes sir uh, sir we call these model is task agnostic because uh, they can perform a wide range of tasks like uh, without requiring any task specific fine tuning uh, their gener generality stem for their pre training on a huge and diverse data set uh, so these models are somehow we can say generalized model these are best at doing a, uh, many things at large stage but on a very specific task these model may perform uh, some uh, uh, they can generate some kind of uh, irrelevant response or not accurate response so uh, this is a reason because uh, these are called task agnostic models okay how has the field of llm evolved since 1960s can you please describe us that as well uh, sir if we if we uh, if we see the 19 uh, from 1960 uh, the first nlp program when uh, elisa was int introduced uh, so uh, the progress was limited due to the computational constraints and uh, their data availability as well as uh, language models are large language models have uh, trans uh, transitioned uh, i mean they are they have jumped from the basic rule based system to complex deep learning architecture and they are now much more able and they are exhibiting the human like uh, languages they are understanding them and generating the capabilities so now language models models are more focused and shifted from the isolated task and they are now more comprehensive and the uh, llm different kind of uh, indispensable across diverse applications so they are uh, uh, mostly use, uh, used nowadays in content creation and uh, communication as well okay i have a question with the respect to transformers which is the main building block for uh, for building large language models. So yes. what ways do you think that LLMs like transformers are revolutionizing the natural language understanding? Okay, uh, sir, the transformer is basically using the advanced self-attention mechanism. Uh, which is something new from the traditional model uh, these mechanism allow them to capture uh, some kind of intricate context which is resulting in more coherent and uh, contextually relevant responses additionally i can uh, add here transformers are also enable uh, to perform parallel processing and uh, they they are enhancing the uh, training speed as well as the model ability to understand the complex language patterns as well so that's why. Okay. Uh, in your slides, you also talk about two things, scalability, scaling, scaling law, and uh, hyperparameters. So can you please tell us that what are some typical hyperparameters that need to be carefully tuned uh, while, while working with LLMs? 
Uh, sir, like uh, some typical hyperparameter uh, which need um, careful tuning when working with the LLM, uh, including uh, weight size, uh, learning rate, as well as their weight initialization, as I discussed in the earlier slide as well. Also, their number of uh, training epochs, uh, it depends upon the need. Uh, okay, and can you also elaborate on the challenges associated with fine tuning LLMs for very specific tasks? Uh, sir, there are various uh, challenges. Um, uh, some of them we have discussed in slide as well. Uh, but fine tuning LLM for specific tasks can pose challenges re related uh, related to data set availability. Uh, Sometimes for domain adoption adoption and uh, avoiding uh, catastrophic forgetting uh, but balancing between them uh, them uh, between task specific updates and uh, their uh, general language understanding is also some uh, how uh, needed needed there okay uh, and uh, now the scaling law because you talk about uh, uh, on the yes, hyperparameters and the scaling law. So how does scaling law impact the whole training process of LLMs? Uh, sir, basically the scaling law uh, help us, uh, it guide us uh, uh, as well as uh, when we are training the language model. Uh, it uh, guide the training of LLM by understanding uh, optimal model size. And uh, uh, except model size, uh, model size, it also include the data set requirements. So it prevent overfitting, ensuring the efficient training as well as it also increase the uh, model performance by doing this. Okay, One, what are some practical applications of LLM beyond NLP and text generation? Okay, sir. Uh, there are some practical application uh, which uh, we can which extend the uh, NLP to estimate uh, like a sentiment analysis and uh, speech recognition uh, as well as language translation as well and uh, content summarization. We can take an example of image captionization here as well. And one last question from my side that which tools and libraries are commonly used for implementing and managing LLMs in real world applications? As uh, commonly used tools and libraries are uh, uh, hugging face transformers and uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch, which are commonly used. Uh, very good, Ms. Nissa, for uh, such you. a gentle introduction to LLMs and uh, uh, I uh, welcome all who actually joined this lecture and see you all in the in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.